Hello and welcome to this week's video. This week I am making an Edwardian S-Bend corset and I was using a reproduction pattern from an original that is made by Atelier Silphy, I think. I hope I'm not butchering her name. And it's the REFW pattern that I'm using. And my idea behind this make was that by this time in history, so we're talking turn of the century, few years into the 20th century, most women would not have custom made corsets. We all know if, well, all of us who have worn corsets, that custom made is really where you get that perfect fit for your body. But that's not what most middle class or even working, and especially not working class, but even upper class women wouldn't necessarily have their, all their corsets custom made. They would go much like we do today to go to a store to buy a bra they would go and buy their corset based on waist size and there would be several different styles that you would choose the one that fit your body type kind of like we do with our bras and so i figured it would be interesting to see because my body is far from standard and of course same thing with modern bras if i make a custom made bra to my size I will get much better fit than I do with a store-bought one, but I can still get a decent fit with a store-bought one that works for my body. So I was thinking how possible it would be to get a comfortable, decent fit with just a store-bought corset of the era. So the pattern that I used is, base, is most likely a store-bought one, and it is a very curvy model. That's why I chose it because my body is naturally quite curvy. And then, of course, when we go for the S-Bend Gibson girl look, it's supposed to be padded out, supposed to be emphasizing that narrow waist. So I needed it to have actually more hip room than I have naturally in my body so that I can, at first of all, tighten that waist because they're like when you tie a corset it's never actually about reducing anything it's always about displacing flesh and on most bodies and on my body when you make that waist smaller the place where that extra flesh goes is down so especially that high hip needs quite a bit of room for me to be able to tighten the waist at all so most patterns that I looked at, especially modern recreation patterns, they didn't actually have enough hip room to begin with for my body. So I chose this pattern and the only change I made to it was that I made the center back a little bit wider just because the way the corset was built, there was very little gap between the last bone and the edge. So let's go ahead and make this first, and then I'll be back and explain how I got it to fit on my body and what things worked, what didn't work, and what my thoughts are on would actually a store-bought corset of the time have worked on my body, and could I have achieved the kind of comfort that I really need in a corset to be able to wear it on a daily basis.
Okay, so now the corset is made and comfort wise, I'd say this is fairly good. The biggest issue that I have with this is that because the way it's built, the bust darts come to my waist and then it flares out quite a bit. It does give me the extra room I need for my bust, but it tends to also make it so that it rises up to my lowest ribs and that can cause pain sometimes. So when I wear this for a longer period, I won't tie it in the front like this because for some reason that seems to cause the issue for me. And the hip pads, these are actually quite big, but fairly squishy hip pads. They don't actually, they don't actually give me that many extra inches, but what they do do is because they are squishy, they take some of the pressure off and do add to the comfort. I am planning on trying a bust improver or a lingerie heart, what they were called. Like it's like a bust improver, but it's not for your bust. It's for your under bust area here just to help see if that would help keep it so that when I sit for longer periods of time, it doesn't have that tendency of wiggling its way up to my lowest ribs because my rib cage is really narrow. So I've had this problem in other corsets too that have this like conical upper torso. One thing that really surprised me about this corset is that it actually didn't have such a huge hip flare as I thought it did. Especially on the mannequin, it looks like a very dramatic shape. But I think that's mostly because, well, it's a mannequin. It doesn't sit exactly the same way as it does on a real body. Because this, it does have hip flare and it does give me a nice look of a very narrow waist. Especially here at this angle. But it's not actually that drastic. Now, if I were to make this into a custom corset, the things that I would change is, I don't really know I could do much about the rib cage because without actually having that, you know, changing the shape to have that cupping effect on your rib ribs, I don't think I can really help it from not ever rising with just patterning. I think, I'll have to do that lingerie heart and that will help with that, but I don't, that's padding. I don't think that the corset could change that. But the thing that I would change is I would maybe make the hip flare a little bit dram more dramatic just to make my waist appear even smaller. And also because I'm very short waisted, also this lower body part, I did already take off a tiny bit here, but I would take off even more because when I sit, these do get pressed together and it does keep me from bending. If I have to bend over, I can't do it very elegantly. I had to kind of, I have to kind of spread my legs to do that. I think my biggest takeaway from this is that really no matter if you're building a custom made corset or to your own body or you're using a ready pattern that you're gonna change to fit your body better or you're really just using a pattern and not changing a thing. The most important thing is choosing a pattern that suits your body proportions. The length but also how much hip flare there is and how the corset is built. There are several, I mean, these kind of Edwardian corsets tend to be built with weird gores and kind of weird seams that go in all directions. But you, when you look at the shape of the corset, of course, it, a corset does change your body proportions a bit. It makes your waist smaller and your hips usually wider and sometimes it, 
also because it lifts your breasts. Like, it t- some of the flesh that di- is displaced from your waist, on some people it does rise up also. So you want to check that, but if you've ever put on any kind of corset, you can see what kind of happens to your body and then choose a pattern that is similar to what happens in your body in any kind of corset. If your body gets a lot of hip flare, choose a pattern with a lot of hip flare. If it doesn't, then don't choose one with a lot of it. And then also look at the proportions. Where does the bust come to? There is variation even in the fashionable silhouette. Find a pattern that suits you. I think that's my biggest takeaway. I don't really have any other advice other than just try and keep sewing and someday you'll get to a nice corset. This is by uh, not my first corset. This is my first Edwardian corset, but the first corsets that I've ever made are very much not comfortable. And it was a learning experience. But with this one, I'm actually happy with. I think this is the first actual like corset that I've been fully happy with and decided that there isn't any huge changes that I would make to it if I were to make it again.